Hey, what's going on? I don't normally record full rounds of World of Warships, but we've been talking quite a bit today in the Stratsco Discord about some of the things that I do when I'm playing just generally. And I thought this was a good round from last night. We played around 1 a.m. Uh, it's one of the highest damage I've put out on a battleship so far. Uh, tier 8 is my highest ship at the moment. So I thought, yeah, sure, like, why not do a full recording? So uh, I'm playing with Kaneri. He's on a brawler, Bismarck. Uh, I'm on the Amagi, which is a sniper battleship. We are top tier uh, in a tier 6 to 8 match. There's one CV and one sub on each team. Both are tier 6, thankfully. Action so they're a little bit less threatening. So at the offset, we're on the A flank. So we're going to stay out here. We have a DD with us, the Kagero. Uh, and Kaneri being a brawler, he would like to get in a little bit closer, so we decide, all right, well, let's see if we can't control that island at EF2. Uh, he, as a brawler, can get in there and do some work. The Monarch's rotating over with us as well, so we'll have a third battleship in the area eventually. And we'll have good edge control. Battleships like to control the edge a lot. I have the option to stay nice and far back if I want depending on how the fight goes. And the other side of the map, uh, which I didn't really pay a lot of attention to during the fight, because again, it was 1 a.m. I wasn't at exactly 100% brain capacity at this point. Uh, there's a lot of those guys rotating in, which I find interesting. Like Zara is going inward. Heinrich's going in, but he's a brawler, so maybe he's trying to get a different angle onto D. George is going out. And Ranger's going in that direction. Minx isn't heading down to point. Chatalot's coming over. Interesting. Didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that. Curious how that's going to shake out. Uh, spotted, no surprise there. My detection radius is huge at over 15 kilometers. Because I'm a big fat Japanese battleship. And that's just how it is. I see we've got a Roma over here. Mm-mm. So there is a DD somewhere, we're aware because we got spotted. There's a contest now at A, we're not capping, so their DD is on point. Boom, it's the Kagero. So we got some Kagero on Kagero action. Their Kagero smokes immediately, which means our Kagero is no longer sighted. Uh, unless that Kagero is like right on the edge of their smoke. So rather than pop his own smoke, he just throws a ton of Twarps straight into their smoke, which is awesome like when this works it's incredible just shuck a bunch of torps into the smoke and see if you get lucky the cooldown's not too long and at this point you're probably not going to get much else to throw torps at he does get lucky we do not have a dd threat on a anymore that's an outstanding canary on the biz is moving up to take care or take control of the island I throw a good job over at the Kagero because that's huge for me as well because now I have the option to move up if I want. Take a little bit more space, uh, which depending on how things happen in mid and, and even at D, the fight right now is kind of to the outside of D, but if it were to go on the objective or move in, uh, I might be able to assist with a spotter plane up, at least on the, uh, the fringes of the fight, depending on what's going on over here. So we've got three BBs into three BBs now over here, and we have a DD advantage. I like the looks of that. And they have a Chumphon, uh, which is what I decide is going to be my first tasty, tasty target. Immediately fire my first volley, and he reacts, but late, well after I shot, uh, and not in time to save himself from any damage, but he does turn pretty sharply. One of the things that a bunch of the YouTube content creators like... Uh, Flambo and Flamus and Overlord Bow and them talk about is watching how people react to your shots as a battleship player because a lot of times our projectile flight time is very long, especially at the longer ranges, obviously. So the the more we learn about how people react as we fire at them, the better decisions we can make. So I saw he react a little bit late that time. So I see he's still got a bit of a turnout going, aim a little high. He immediately turns back in and slams the brake a second time. So this time, 
He's turned in for a second time, and he slammed the brake. Uh, so I'm going to log that away for my next shot the ship is on fire. and see if I can't make uh, a better decision about where to aim this coming up volley. Uh, I'm on fire. I just popped the heel. There's no reason to pop a repair with a single fire on a battleship. You have plenty of health. Knowing that he stomped the brake last time, line up with that presumption. He does it again, stomps the brake this time, tries to turn out a little bit, uh, but it cannot save him from the dev strike. Which is quite fulfilling, and now I'm looking for my next target. Vladistock, he's got the island. I can't even see him. My guns are on the wrong side to deal with the Duke. I can't see Roma. CV's harassing a little bit. So I guess it's time for Baron, who looks like he's trying to get a flank. My New Mexico is out in no man's land. I don't know what he's doing there by himself. I guess he sees the DD, but the DD's kind of headed towards him. Interesting. On that shot, if I had been paying closer attention, he had turned out a little bit before I shot. I adjusted for that, but he continued to turn out. But as I'm looking for the second shot, the CV just appears briefly on the minimap and on screen. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, if you're going to just motor straight into my line of sight, clearly autopiloting, I will happily take a shot over there. Mm, and that's that's why that's why we play Battleship for those kind of shots. The full to zero clap feels so good. I was very hyped up in chat at this point. Uh, nom 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 nom. Uh, in voice as well. I had quite the chuckle about that. Canary ended up getting a little aggressive, which is the Canary way. Uh, got out there and there were just too many battleships for him to contend with. So Vladistock is still nose in. Monarch is still calling for help with his Duke, which I'm a little concerned about now because he is pushing up on me. I, as much as possible, try to keep my guns on the same side of my boat. So I've been doing a whole lot of ambling forward and backwards at quarter speed. Uh, that varies your, dis your speed and direction, which makes it harder to be sniped at by long range ships. Uh, it also keeps me from pushing too far into a fight, which I have no desire to. Uh, we have good position. I have DD advantage. I have no reason to contest any of their ships up close as a sniper when we control A, but now the Duke is coming around the corner. Now this is this is a 1 a.m. hopium-laced shot. That was a terrible shot. It had almost no chance of success. Uh, he had a huge angle on me. I, I, it was just kind of hopes and prayers. I wasn't going to get anything really out of that. He's shooting at the Monarch, but he's starting to point towards me, and I'm scared he's going to ram at this point, uh, which would be a, a useful thing if you're low health and you're out of position, especially in a battleship. Uh, if you can ram successfully, it's a good thing. I'm holding shot because he continues to turn, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's going for a full broadside. Actually, he's just turning to get his guns over on the Monarch, and he's rotating back around for ram, so I just have to try and get through the bow. Thankfully, I do. Lots of pins through the bow. That does not always work. Um, thankfully, he was thin enough on the front end that I could punch through there and hit all the juicy bits behind it. Uh, but, yeah, that was, that was a pretty sketchy situation right there, and we're going into sketchy situation number two, what I should have been doing here is standing on D or having spammed E, but instead I just continue to motor backwards and give a huge broadside to the Vladistock, who's just been camping on that island the entire time, as well as the Roma. I get very lucky both of those shots, dispersions, or the dispersion on both of those shots, I should say, was atrocious uh, for them. I got very lucky that I didn't get punished for it. Just a little bit of health, nothing too crazy. Now in that situation, I elected to put the fire out because the secondary threat is removed. Um, the Vladistock's been shooting AP, so I'm not likely to catch on fire again. Uh, that's a, a fairly okay time, even with only one fire to put out the fire. 
and now we're in a cyclone. Um, so our advantage for range is gone because I can no longer see more than eight kilometers. You can get information updates from your teammates about targets that are further than eight kilometers away and then aim via the minimap, but it is not my strong suit. I am, I'm actually quite bad at it. Very, very mediocre. Uh, it's something I definitely need to work on. So Kagero finally goes down to the Vladivostok. And thankfully, my dispersion works out in my favor. Huge broadside damage. He was, that could have happened to me from either of them when I came around the island previously. But that's the way RNG Jesus goes sometimes. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. In my instance, I did. In his instance, he did not. So right now, we've lost D. We've been basically wiped out over there. I try to punch his nose. This time doesn't work. Uh, I don't know all the ships. I haven't memorized all the armor schemes by any stretch at this point. Well, painful broadside. So I didn't get away with punching through his nose to kill him the way I did uh, just a moment ago. And I'm not sure if that's, uh, I just had bad dispersion or if uh, his armor's layout is better. Thankfully, he's not going for a ram. So I'm just swinging out, get a little bit of extra distance in case he changes his mind try to get some sort of shot. He's not giving me any good angles, and I'm sitting here on a broadside, so I go for superstructure and just hope to get some pins, but not near enough. Monarch's moving in, thankfully, to help, but I'm fully committed. I'm giving him a huge broadside again, which is a terrible idea, but desperation and panic. We're down two objectives. We're down two ships. It's 1 a.m. I'm making bad decisions all at the same time. Hoping I can just get my shot off first, and I do, but he still manages to squeeze one out in return, uh, and I paid dearly for it. So let's assess the situation. Ranger, effectively dead. He's got the Edinburgh and the uh, U-69 on top of him. He's done for. He just doesn't. He just hasn't actually died yet. He maybe gets a little bit more damage in, but he can't kill both of them. There's no way. So we're down three points. We are up on point points though, thankfully. So there is an avenue for victory available, uh, but it's gonna probably require us to split up because if they continue to control more objectives than us, which they will if we stay together, we will lose on points in the next seven and a half minutes. So I'm trying to get the Monarch at this point to go to B. I realize I'm effectively sending him to his demise, but he has so much more health than me. I just healed once. I do have another heal coming up in a little while. If I take C, I can probably safely cap that. He can go up to B, hopefully get up there and take it. If not, at a bare minimum, he chips some damage out of people. I take C, we're in a decent-ish spot. Maybe we can find a way back into this. I also, I wasn't watching his gameplay super closely, but I wasn't terribly impressed, terribly impressed. So that's the other reason I'm kind of selfishly like, yo dog, like you go B, I'll go C. At this point, he's coming around this island, still just following me like a puppy. And I'm very annoyed. In, in voice chat, I'm, I'm tilted <laughs> quite a bit. Canary's having a, a laugh at it. I'm trying desperately to get him to just go to B because we don't have a win condition if he stays at C. If we split, maybe somebody gets a 1v1 and if they win that, now it's only 3v2. But if we stay together, we're going to take a 4v2 fight most likely. It's going to end tragically. Or they don't get even back. have to come fight us. Get back. They literally can just keep running circles behind us and capping the points. Finally managed to get his attention and he's finally headed the right direction. But at this point, we've got a spotter plane showing up on A. I'm gonna notice it in a moment, look over, it's the Bairn, of course, who was coming from B side. And 
the advantage here is we are 2v1, but as you can see, I can't actually see him because of the cyclone mechanics. You're going to watch me kind of waffle aim here. Again, very not good at this. I need to practice it desperately. Without the, the snapping that happens during uh, like normal minimap aim, when it's in this situation, I'm just kind of terrible at it. Maybe I should have turned up to get actual vision so I could have killed him more easily or been more effective with my shots, but at the same time, I'm just trying to protect what health bar I have left. I know he can see the Monarch, and hopefully he is engaging only with the Monarch, since that's an easier target than with me. But if the Monarch had turned up earlier, the Monarch and Baron would still be scrapping it out. I just wouldn't be involved in it, uh, which is now, you know, I've slammed the brakes a couple times to keep turning back and looking. I could have already been on C at this point. I could have been capping, uh, which maybe would or wouldn't matter. There's those little micro optimizations after the fact that you can look at and see. And now here comes the Heinrich. Heinrich is a secondary boat. Thankfully, though, we're quite close to each other. Uh, compliments of the Cyclone before he can see me. Amagi's secondary range, I believe, is 6'9", or thereabouts. So, even though I have a health disadvantage, uh, my secondaries are also joining the fray, and my guns are better than his. However, the Heinrich has torps, which is a little bit scary, because the, I think they're 6 kilometer, and he's already in a position where he could have torped me, potentially. I don't know if he had the module was damaged or if he just didn't. He popped Hydro. I don't know why. Monarch doesn't have Torps. I don't have Torps. Monarch does look like he's going to win against the Baron. The Heinrich continues this turn and he shoots his Torps at the Monarch, who is basically dead. I don't know why he elected to shoot at the Monarch. He would have been better served to try and aim those at me or fire the torps off his other side at me before he started that 90 degree turn because he'd been kind of headed to the left and then headed down you know in terms of mini-map he was going west then south uh, would have been better i think if he had tried to torp me instead so i'm located which means and detected now but located somebody's got the commander abilities so they know i'm here cyclone is starting to clear out so I can see further now. It's the Edinburgh. And now I just have to try and do something. I'm trying to rotate guns around because I need to head up somewhere else. I'm trying to get nose in. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go B or D after this. Uh, and I'm also looking for the sub. Oh goody, here comes the sub. Quickly just chuck depth charges out there. I'm pinged. Hooray. I have repair available. I elect not to use it. I don't know why. I'm not sure if it would have helped. Maybe if I just insta repaired things would have been okay. Oh, here come the torps. Great. Actually, those came from kind of at a weird angle. I wonder if I had repaired that if it would have been okay. So now I'm panicking. It's, it's late at night. I'm the last one alive. Adrenaline's going. I've got so much damage. So much like performance in the game. I really don't want to lose this. I'm um, blind firing into the smoke. Not well. Not trying to aim the shots. Literally just yeeting shots over there. Thankfully, the sub was moving in a predictable manner. I was able to get that, but not before he marked me again. Hit me with corpse again. And that was that. Would have really liked to win that one. Felt like. I deadlifted the team pretty hard. And if some things had gone differently, maybe we would have. Like I said, I didn't really get to see a whole lot what was going on on the other side of the map during the initial engagement. We were fairly evenly split team-wise, so should have been a similar number of ships. Actually, I think they had a ship advantage, and we had CV advantage because I popped their CV. Because we had three BBs on our side, to match our three, a DD each, and they had a, a cruiser, which we did not have. And on top of that, I popped their BB. So I really feel like the other side probably underperformed pretty badly. Uh, and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it all. Which like, you know, you, you, you shouldn't expect to be able to do it all every round. Uh, but I had a good round. 
like I said, highest damage I've put out. Uh, I think just across any of my ships, I think it's the highest damage round I've ever had. Uh, got the Kraken, got the Confederate, got the high caliber. Like, feels good. Did a lot of work. Felt good about how I played for the most part. Made a few small mistakes, but, you know, those are those are learning opportunities and, and things I can hopefully do better on in the future. But, yeah, that was just kind of a, a look at what uh, a bit of a crazy round of uh, World of Warships looks like from my perspective uh, as BB. And, yeah, there we have it.